Hey people, how's it going? So, this is a slightly different video today. Usually we uh, are in some far corner of the world going on an adventure, but today we're in sunny, sunny old England. Good old Peterborough. <laughs> she knew what I was going to say. <laughs> Good old Peterborough, where we're from. Now we're going to bring you a video from Peterborough soon to show you a different side of it, because uh, if you know anything about Peterborough, you know that we, uh, we, we have quite a bad reputation uh, as a city. But uh, that's not the point of this video today. The point of this video is to actually talk about how we manage to travel so often, how we do it, and advice, tips and tricks. But it's walking in a lovely British countryside. What more can you ask for? So let's do it. So I guess the first piece of advice I can give you is that you need to be willing to do things on the cheap and sacrifice a little bit of comfort. Now, we generally go with economy airlines. Now, I know a lot of you are going to be like, no, nope, not doing that, but hear me out. If it's a short haul trip, two hours, I'm sure you can sit down in the most, you know, not the most comfortable seats for a couple of hours. It's not that big a deal, you know. The savings you're going to get from doing so are well worth it. Hey guys, how's it going? I love these guys. I always walk past these horses. Actually, I think they're females. I always walk past these ladies all the time. Hello. I would say keep up your someone's horse and I really don't want to annoy anyone, especially a farmer around here. <laughs> you don't want to mess with farmers. But anyway, as I was saying, so you've got to be willing to sacrifice, you know, a little bit of comfort sometimes, but to save money in the process. So for instance, we use economy airlines like, you know, we use Ryanair, EasyJet, Wizz Air, anything that's cheap. And we tend to just go, right, okay, we know it's not gonna be as comfortable, but we've just saved probably close to like 300 quid on a flight heat right now. So it kind of pays, it pays for itself, you know? You gotta make a small sacrifice to get a long-term gain from it. And so that's the first thing I recommend, is if you're flying everywhere or looking to fly everywhere, with the expensive carriers, just stop, maybe consider the low cost carriers, you know. Some of them ain't too bad. Personally, I'd recommend Wizz Air. <clears throat> I've used, <clears throat> pardon me, I've used three different airline carriers, or airline companies, sorry, uh, over the years. As I say, Ryanair, Wizz Air, EasyJet, um, the ones that mainly leave from the UK. And Wizz Air for me, in my opinion, at least, have the most comfortable seats and usually the, mo the most smoothest enjoyable rides. Now, I know someone's going to come along in the comments and be like, Wizz Air's awful, I hate Wizz Air, I had a terrible experience with Wizz Air. And that's fine. We all have different experiences, but that's just my take on it. Now, the reason why I like Wizz Air, and I know a couple of airlines do this, but Wizz Air, they do it really well, is that you can do something called Fairfinder. So, for instance, you can enter in Luton Airport as your airport that you're departing from, and you can choose to leave, to go anywhere. Any destination that Wizz Air will take you, or that you could at least get from Luton Airport, you can search for. So you enter in Luton, enter in the airport, or just, just put any airport, and then you enter in the number of people that you want to go with, adults, children, infants, and then you, uh, you search, and you'll get all the flights that are leaving for the cheapest flights possible. And, We've managed to go to Big Dost, for instance, in Poland for 40 quid doing that. 40 quid for a return ticket. That is amazing. Mental, isn't it? The, the train ticket up here, or to get, sorry, to get there, is gonna cost us more than the flight. So, I guess the first piece of advice is research. Research, research, research. Be willing to sacrifice comfort for cost savings and do your research. And then, of course, you have things like you know, say Google Flights or you have uh, Skyscanner. Mm. Now, the thing with those guys or those companies is that if you're searching for a lot of flights using them, eventually they'll figure it out because, yeah, they've got your website data, your cookies, stuff like that. And it's gonna know that you're looking for a flight. And as a result, it may start to show you higher prices, you know, a markup, so to speak. Because it's like, this person wants to travel, they're willing to travel, so, let's show them higher prices, you know? So to get around that, you can basically search in a private browser 
and it won't have any data on you as a user. And as a result, you're less likely to get them price hikes. So that's a little, a little team McGrath tip there. Another thing as well, I don't know how true this is, but apparently if you use a VPN, you can basically hide your location and you can basically trick the browser into thinking you're in a place that's cheaper than, or sorry, that has a lower economy or a lower currency value than the one you live in. So for instance, I can make the VPN, I could spin up a VPN. I'm not gonna recommend any because go with what you're comfortable with, but spin up a VPN and I'll uh, pretend that I'm in India or set my uh, locality to India. And there's a small chance I'll actually get shown cheaper flights because obviously, yeah, they want the business, but they know that people in these countries have a lower currency value than say the UK. And so they may decrease the prices a little bit as a result. So I don't know how true that is, but I've heard that's a hack that you can do. If anyone's done that and it's worked, please do let me know because I've not tried it yet, but I've heard quite from quite a few people that you can do that. But there are more things you can do and we'll have a look at them. But before we do that, let's just appreciate this beautiful countryside. How spectacular is that, eh? So then, beyond just saving money by getting cheap flights, what else can you do? Well, when you're booking hotels, you've got to think to yourself, do I need a palace or do I need somewhere to rest my head? Now, sometimes I'll look at reviews for a place and they'll be like, it's terrible, it's filled with bugs and crap and it's, it's just awful. And I actually get to the place and it ain't that bad. I think a lot of people really do exaggerate sometimes. Like, I... Uh, I was looking for a place to stay in Athens in Greece and I stayed at this place and I was like this is nice I wonder what everyone else thought of it so after I'd finished I look at the reviews and uh, everyone was like it's absolutely terrible it's like disgusting it's a complete sty and I was like did we stay in a different place like I don't understand how this has happened like you know I, I've not had this experience at all and uh, I think it's very much subjective you know some people want more from for what they pay but to be honest if you're willing to you know subvert your expectations a little bit and know that if you're going to pay less that you're, going, you're not going to get a palace then again you're going to save money it's about willing to sacrifice comfort for savings and we do that a lot if you look on our channel you'll see that we don't stay in the most glamorous of places sometimes we look out and we'll pay very little for a really nice place if you look at bosnia for instance that's a good example but uh you've got to be willing to so how can you save money on apartments hotels well for us personally we prefer to go to uh, airbnb the reason for that is is because booking.com got hacked <laughs> and we got uh we got diverted to a scam site basically and almost got uh almost got ripped off by an incredible amount of money and uh as a result we kind of lost trust in booking.com systems and uh you know they're uh you know how how reliable they are and uh we, we now use Airbnb. Now, Booking.com might have solved that by now, so don't let that put you off, but it did put us off. But anyway, when we go and book an apartment or a, a place to stay, we have some prerequisites. So one of them is that the place needs to have Wi-Fi. Because obviously, if I'm editing out on the road these videos, I need Wi-Fi to do it. That's, all, uh, that's, that's a given. The second thing is self-check-in. Now, the reason for that is, is because if we've got a flight, Economy Airlines, you're going to know this quite well, they're quite quite easily get delayed or cancelled sometimes so to get around potential delays and cancellations or mainly delays to be honest we will have a self check-in we'll make sure we go to an apartment with a self check-in because then we uh if we have a delay of any sort it doesn't affect our check-in process we'd have to mess around with anything we just check in after the a lot of check-in time and we're good so we always make sure to do that and then the final thing we do is make sure the place has a washing machine why do we do that? Well, that brings me on to my next point. If you're traveling on an airline and you're taking masses of luggage, you're going to have to pay more money to carry that luggage on. But if you're paying, if you're only bringing on a little bag, you're going to save a ton of money. And so the lighter you pack, the more money you're going to save in the long run. So what we started doing was we were like, right, we were just literally, I mean, flies everywhere. Look at this. Literally batted them away. <laughs> One of the uh, upsides of a countryside, I guess. But uh, we uh, we were like, 
okay, how can we travel as light as possible on a holiday? And we were like, well, think about it. You pack the minimum amount of clothes, you get a place where there's a washing machine and you just wash the clothes and you rotate your clothes throughout the holiday. And now you're not packing a week's worth of clothes, but only a few days worth of clothes and you're rotating between them. And as long as you've got a place of a washing machine, that's fine, you can do that, no problem. So that's another potential solution as well, but just happens to be part of the thing we look for when we rent an apartment. So once we have them filters in place, we then find all the apartments that cover those prerequisites and then we literally get the slider and we move it all the way down until there's only like two or three apartments left on the map. And we look at the map and then we have one more prerequisite and that is, is the apartment we're staying in within walking distance or travelable distance to the main part of the place we're going to. Now sometimes the maps can be deceiving. When we went to Oman for instance, we got an Airbnb and it looks really close to the centre but when we actually got to Oman, because it's quite a big country, it turned out we were like two hours away. <laughs> so you want to do some research, jump on Google Maps and just see how long it takes to get there. And you know, make sure the public transport is easy enough to get, get you there, you know, if you're planning to stay a little bit further afield. Once we've got close enough to the flight to the city or the town, we will then choose the closest, cheapest apartment. And as a result, we've been able to get some ridiculously cheap places. For instance, we've stayed in Athens for £25 a night. We've stayed in Bosnia for £19 a night. And we stayed in a four-star luxury, like hotel slash apartment in Abu Dhabi for 45 quid a night. And it had everything. If you go and look at some of our videos, you can see that place was 45 quid a night. One of the cheapest we could possibly get. And uh, still, relatively close because I had a bus station outside which was quite regular so we had it all so if you're searching for those things and if you're not as picky you can get even cheaper if you don't mind self-checking or get ignoring that even more places that you can find if you don't you know care about the washing machine bit even more so if you don't have picky little filters you can save and of course you've got hostels and things like that as a couple we prefer our privacy so we don't tend to stay in hostels unless it has its own like separate room but you know you do what works for you and i guess the final part of this segment is how you can save money in day-to-day -day life because really what good is getting the cheaper hotels cheaper things like that if you're not got any money to do it well the first thing i'd recommend is right now get a pen and paper out and write down all your expenses, right? And put it into two categories. The first one being essential, like your rent, your utility bills, stuff like that. Make sure they're paid. And then the second one, non-essential, Netflix, stuff like that. Work out roughly how much you're spending on those non-essential things and then work out if that extra bit of money or cutting some of those down is gonna give you that extra bit of money to get another trip going. I'll give you an example. So we did something similar and we realised we were going Costa practically every day after work. Just, just out of pure habit, just literally habitual, just going to Costa every day after work. And if you've not been to Costa before, it's a coffee shop and it's rather expensive. You should call it Costa Lot. It's very expensive. Now we're doing that every day and, or every other day, but we're spending like 40 quid a month on Costa at some point. Now, remember what I told you earlier? We went to Big Dost in Poland for 40 pound for a return. Each, 40 pound, 80 quid total. Now that Costa would have been our flight to Big Dost. And so we started looking at ways of replacing the things we were doing. So for instance, Costa, we just literally went to the pound shop. We brought a Thermos flask from the pound shop. We filled it with coffee and then we'll go for a little stroll around after work and have a coffee. Just find a nice little bench, have a coffee and a chat there. Go to a nice little green area and do that. Because believe it or not, Peterborough, strangely enough, does have a few nice green areas. This is still in Peterborough, believe it or not. <laughs> so, we started looking at ways of cutting down. We were like, Netflix, do we actually even watch Netflix? We're not even in the UK most of the time. We weren't. So then we were like, right. And a lot of the apartments we stay in actually give you Netflix. So we're like, we don't need Netflix. We get it in our apartments abroad. And if we're at home, we're just watching YouTube. So we saved money there. And eventually those savings started piling up and we were like, oh, we've got this extra little bit of gold we didn't have before. Okay, let's take that extra little bit of gold and book a holiday. And that's how we managed to travel quite often. 
Now, in terms of what we do, I work in IT, I'm a web developer, and Tabby works in education. She's a teaching assistant, and it pays okay money, you know? Not the worst, not the greatest, but we always try and budget where we can. We don't wear the fanciest clothes, we don't have the most expensive house, you know, we don't have an expensive car, we don't have anything like that. We just, we think to ourselves, if we're saving money here, we're saving enough money to go on holiday and explore. And if that's really what you want to do, you've got to be willing to make sacrifices. Really, traveling is about sacrifice, if you want to travel cheaply at least. And so, the final guest thing that I need to recommend is how you'd use your, if you're working, how you use your holiday. So, for instance, I will, you know, I've got X amount of holiday days per, uh, per year that I can use. Now, rather than using them all in one go, I'll split them out into little mini holidays. So for instance, I'll book off a Friday and a Monday and I'll go on a little mini weekend excursion to say Vienna and then I'll jump on a Flix bus or something like that and then go to Bratislava. Did it recently, that's a good example. And that's another thing as well, Flix bus. If you wanna go to multiple countries, use coaches, travel between them using coaches. We got from Montenegro to Albania and back for 30 quid each. We got two countries on that trip. So, you know, things like that as well. Coach trips really do save money. Blimey, I mean, look at that. So many flies. They're hovering around my lovely aftershave, I hope. Not the smell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, God, they're literally above, above our heads. So, it's little things like that, really, how you can save money. And, uh, you know, just use your holiday, split them out into little mini breaks and do it like that. If you do those things, you'll be able to travel more regularly. I promise you that. So, anyway. If you have any useful tips, do let us know down in the comments. But we really appreciate you watching. We hope you have a wonderful day. And we'll catch you soon from this lovely fly infested field that we're now going to try and escape. Take care, people. See you soon.